Historic Akron Civic Theater and the City of Akron's 2021 State of the City Address. At this time, please be seated and enjoy tonight's event.
Three Ohioans have tested positive for COVID-19. This is no ordinary time. It's important for us to take aggressive action to protect Ohioans. This is a time which requires extraordinary, heroic measure of shared sacrifice to ensure that we protect our most vulnerable citizens. A group that tries to attract jobs and talent to the region says local employment recovery could take five years and trail the rest of the country. As a community, the call to action around equity is one we can no longer afford to side with. World Health Organization officials confirm there are more than half a million positive cases. The vaccine is still at least 12 to 18 months away. Working on the front lines at Northeast Ohio hospitals can, of course, take a mental toll on the health care workers. That video of George Floyd handcuffed, face down on the ground, has sparked outrage nationwide. The number of Ohioans not working is in the highest known level ever. The state's unemployment rate was 16.8% in April. That's the highest since Ohio began keeping records 44 years ago. It has been a really tough year for a lot of us. You know, many people are asking for help for the first time. Well, down in Akron, the mayor says the help that they've already given to residents is going to continue. I certainly understand that people are struggling right now, maybe to pay their water to a bill. We do have a program that's called Akron Care. To help local families, the food bank increased the frequency of its neighborhood distribution. Some financial hope tonight. Tens of millions of people will receive their coronavirus stimulus. The Paycheck Protection Program, or PPP, set aside nearly $350 billion to cover companies' payroll expenses. Just last week, Council President Marco Somerville and I announced the City of Akron's Racial Equity and Social Justice Task Force. To help out because, I mean, that, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to help each other. The community now offering up grants to make sure people can keep creating. At this time of great need, the most important thing is that we come together. In conjunction with the state of Ohio, we'll be opening up a mass vaccination site right here in Summit County at the Summit County Fairgrounds. And one week from today, all Ohio and Dave's and older will be eligible for the vaccine. We are trying to vaccinate as many individuals as quickly as possible. Vaccination rates are beginning to rise across the state. The name of the game today is vaccines. This is where we went. At more than 600 days, baseball has returned to Akron. This is the city on the move. There's no question about that. Ready to roll, Northeast Ohio, because it is very busy. Welcome James Harding. Good evening. It's my privilege to introduce our mayor, Dan Horrigan. And as of August 1st, he no longer signs my paycheck, so you can be sure what I say here is true. All of us have endured a lot these past 18 months, but I can tell you, Akron fared better than many because of the steady, thoughtful leadership of my friend and mentor, Dan Horgan. Our mayor continues to confront COVID and America's racial legacy with energy, compassion, and empathy. He is driven always by a desire to do what is right, even when it's hard, even when the politics are ugly. I've witnessed our mayor advocate for science in the earliest days of the pandemic on daily calls with the governor. I've seen him walk through crowds of protesters listening to each individual story or concern. I've seen him visit dozens of storefronts, taking time with the business owner to quietly learn what they need and make sure we as staff followed through with the request. That personal commitment, that ability to see constituents as people first, that's Dan Horgan. 
Many don't know that our mayor is the first person in the office each and every day. He follows up on a resident letter or a 311 call often by showing up on their front porch. He never punishes effort mistakes, only apathy. His leadership inspires those around him to be better. He brings his whole self to this job, and Akron is better for it. Please join me in welcoming our mayor, Dan Morgan. Thank you, James, and good evening. Welcome to the Akron Civic Theater. Before I start, I want to thank everybody that had to wait in line a little bit. Uh, thank you for your patience. And obviously, there's a band that's playing afterwards, and, I, and as I walked in and thanked them, they thanked me for being the opening act, so um, the band is pointing out. First, let me express my gratitude to the Akron Roundtable, our local downtown restaurants, and our city workers and the civic staff for making this event possible. These dedicated professionals shifted on a dime, literally on a dime yesterday, to host this event indoors to ensure that the safety of all of our guests. Please, please join me in thanking them for their efforts. The support of family has, has never been more important than this past year. Deanna, thank you for 27 wonderful years. Cassidy, Kennedy, Camille, Mom, now Luca, Ian, Ian too. I consider all of you, I consider, me, I consider myself blessed to have you all in my life, so thank you. And to my entire, yeah, that's a round of applause. And to my entire network of family and friends, your support really provides the foundation for my life. It's my pleasure and privilege to serve alongside such a strong and thoughtful leader as Council President Margo Somerville and all the members of Akron City Council. And to the members who are here with us tonight, please stand or wave as we thank you for your service to our community. The backbone of what makes this city run every single day are the 1,800 city employees who have endured furloughs, uncertainty, sickness, and loss this past year. Akron owes you our sincere gratitude. And to my cabinet, who has helped guide the city through incredible challenges. I am honored to work with each and every one of you every day. And if you're a City of Akron employee here tonight, please stand so you can be recognized. Obviously, it's been some time since I've had the opportunity to speak directly to the Akron community the way I am tonight. 2020 was a year like any other, unlike any other. I delivered my last State of the City address last February 26th, just 11 days before the first case of COVID-19 was confirmed in Ohio. The economic and social challenges COVID has created, as well as our response to them, will define a generation. This pandemic brought to light the suffering that has been happening in the shadows for decades. From housing and food insecurity, the trauma of violence, health care inequities, and the devastating effects and impacts of systemic racism. And while these realities can be difficult to confront, and let me add, difficult conversations aren't wrong, they're just difficult. We cannot turn away from these challenges. Instead, we have to face them head on, with clear eyes, clear minds, and open hearts. And while the pandemic has showed us some of the worst realities, it has also exposed some of the most inspiring and encouraging facets of our community. From nurses and teachers, doctors, first responders, and other essential workers who sacrificed their own well-being to the small business that pivoted on a dime to fulfill community needs, often at great expense, and to the parents and caregivers who stretched themselves to the limits to care for others under extraordinary challenges. And if we haven't learned to appreciate all who have sacrificed for our community and all of us, then God help us. And I have no doubt that every single person in this theater was touched in life-changing ways last year through either loss, struggle, or fear for the future. And tonight, I want you to know that I struggled too. This past year and a half pushed me and my staff to the limits of our abilities and beyond, working to respond to concurrent crises of public health, the economy, and racial unrest. My top priority is always to keep you and your family safe and to create those pathways for security and prosperity for every Akron resident. 
And as mayor, some days the best I could hope for was an opaque view of what was ahead. But my faith in Akron never wavered. And while the how we bounced back wasn't exactly clear at times, I never doubted that we would. And today, I'm proud to share the beginning of that path forward, what I see as a solid foundation for our recovery. And this isn't about going back to the way we've always done things, but really creating an even better future, one that works for every single one of us in the community. The pandemic laid bare the economic realities created by social and, social and racial disparities. Many of our core neighborhoods were just beginning to emerge from the effects of the Great Recession when COVID struck. Our downtown progress was literally stopped in its tracks. And our small business community, which is really the, the backbone of our local economy, was brought to its knees. And if you were black or female or on a fixed income, the economic impact of COVID was far worse. And while median household income went, across, went up across the board in 2020, white Akronites are still experiencing more economic progress than their black neighbors. And as I said in my speech last year, we have to build a more prosperous, opportunity-rich Akron. The pandemic showed all of us that there is a lot of work to do to achieve that goal. Yet in the face of all of these systemic challenges, there is significant opportunity. Even during the darkest days, of the pandemic, the city responded to the economic devastation brought on by COVID. I used CARES Act funding to keep police, fire, and EMS on the job, allocated over $1.2 million to assist low-income families with utility bills, and provided millions of dollars to the United Way for rental and mortgage assistance. Also authorized $3.6 million for homeless care and shelter aid. And together with the county and the Greater Akron Chamber, we saw to it that over $6 million in local relief funding went to Akron small businesses. Let me take this opportunity to thank County Executive Eileen Shapiro for her partnership during this past year. Another essential partner throughout this pandemic has been Summit County Public Health and Commissioner Donna Skoda and her staff. They have administered over 67,000 vaccines provided thousands of tests and helped set the tone for how we protect the health of our community. I'd like to give all of you a round of applause too. Thank you. They have been steadfast in their approach, even now as the Delta variant threatens our recovery. The best and ultimately the only way we will emerge from this crisis is for every one of us to understand the safety and effectiveness of the vaccine. And I'm urging all of you to be vocal champions of this life-saving preventive measure in your workplaces, in your communities, and your families. And as the vaccine provides increasing protection to all of our residents, we enter a new phase of this pandemic. That's the recovery phase. In April, after it was clear that our city would receive direct aid from the federal government, I released my framework for how Akron can leverage this one-time one -time money to stimulate economic growth for all. And the Akron Recovery Plan lays out six buckets of investment that I believe will address systemic disparities and make Akron more competitive in the post-COVID world. Tonight, I want to discuss some of what I hope to achieve for Akron through the use of these recovery funds. My Planning to Grow Akron 2.0 strategy details the significant need to reinvest in housing rehabilitation and new infill construction. And while the efforts since 2016 have doubled the median sales price for a home in Akron, restoring millions of dollars in home equity lost during the foreclosure crisis, many of our neighborhoods are still not seeing enough of those benefits. Summit Lake, Middlebury, North Hill, Kenmore, East Akron, parts of West Akron, and Goodyear Heights are still challenged by aging housing stock, undervalued markets, vacancy, and demolition. It is imperative, and we have to restore market confidence in these neighborhoods, one, to, to retain existing residents, and number two, provide new housing at a variety of levels. That's why tonight I am proposing a $15 million rehabilitation program, as well as a $10 million infill construction program to close the gap between what it costs to build in these neighborhoods and what the market will lend. Targeting both of these programs to key neighborhoods we have an opportunity to transform those areas of Akron hardest hit by past and current economic downturns. 
housing has to be and will be a very large part of our recovery strategy. Our small business community continues to demonstrate its resiliency as we combat COVID's devastating effects. Access to capital, long a challenge for Akron's entrepreneurs, was evident during the pandemic. Even as hundreds of billions of dollars in federal loans were made available, only 27% of those dollars went to low or moderate income neighborhoods nationwide. In response to these realities, last fall, I launched the Akron Resiliency Fund in partnership with the Development Finance Authority. With an initial investment of $2 million from our relief funding, the fund has been established to eliminate those barriers for small businesses in need. And the results have been outstanding. So far, 16 loans have been made, with 63% going to black-owned businesses and 100% going to low or moderate income census tracts. And in the months and years to come, I will continue to make entrepreneurship a centerpiece of my economic agenda. And I believe Akron is very well positioned to help existing and new businesses recover and grow. But it's time to do more and it is time to be bolder. Let's talk for a moment just about the neighborhood we're all gathered in here tonight, downtown Akron. And we have worked diligently and carefully these past 30 years to rebuild our center city into a regional job and entertainment destination. We cannot allow the economic heartbeat of this region to fail. Literally, downtowns across the country have taken COVID on the chin. As offices emptied out, bars and restaurants shut down, and parks and theaters closed their doors. Akron has been a prime example, really, of this perfect storm. But there is a lot to be hopeful about. Residential construction in downtown has not slowed as evidenced by the market demand for new units as soon as they come online. Lock 3, Canal Park, and the wonderful Civic Theater are welcoming crowds again this summer. There is life in downtown Akron. We're seeing the transformation right before our eyes. Together, we can emerge from this pandemic stronger than ever before. To jumpstart this recovery, I am proposing an additional $3.5 million towards the renovation of Lock 3 to begin next fall. Built in 2003 as really a temporary space, Lock 3 has always been about economic and community development for downtown. 17 years later, it has become Akron's Central Park. It's a destination for the region, and now it's time to make this pop-up concert venue a permanent fixture of downtown's landscape. Right along Main Street, we need to incentivize businesses to stay, and we need to attract new ones to fill vacant storefronts. So I am planning to allocate $1 million initially to attract and retain retail along Main Street. Additionally, I have partnered with the University of Akron in their Akron Arts Initiative, and will work towards a more seamless and impactful connection between the university and our strong urban core. Let me take this opportunity to thank President Dr. Miller for his vision and for his commitment to Akron's future. This is just the beginning. More will be needed to assist downtown in its recovery in the coming years. And I'm working with the Elevate Akron partners and key stakeholders to identify more areas of investment where it is needed. Just for example, I strongly believe We've talked about this for a couple of years. We need a, we need a nonprofit, real estate-focused organization right here in downtown, like many cities our size do, dedicated to promoting economic development in our central city. And in the coming year, I will be working to see that such an organization is established. <laughs> 2020 was also a year that highlighted national wounds compounded over centuries with regard to racial injustice. And in my 2020 State of the City address, I said this, across the globe, we are marching in a greater direction of diversity and elevating the voices of the historically oppressed populations. And I shared my vision that Akron would be a leading example for other communities 
in this time of inclusion and empowerment. And I meant those words then, and I mean them even more now. As centuries of inequity boil to the surface, 2020 was a year of protest demanding police reform. But I want to be clear on what I see as viable solutions. I'm no fan of defunding or underfunding the police. Instead, we have to focus those appropriate resources to address mental health care and effective, let me repeat, effective community policing strategies. Akron has been ahead of the curve in adopting policies that advance social justice. In the last year and a half, we have redesigned and empowered our police auditor in order to create a more effective civilian oversight of the police. We redesigned our own hiring and purchasing processes to significantly increase the diversity of both city staff and city contracts. We also implemented a ballot initiative mandating proper lease of body-worn body -worn camera footage, which ironically received support from nearly 90% of Akron voters last November. And most importantly, we brought together dozens of dedicated community members to form the Racial Equity and Social Justice Task Force, led by Bishop Joey Johnson. The task force recommendations due at the end of this year will set the stage for even more growth and progress towards equal access and treatment for all. And I urge every one of you here tonight to thoughtfully consider those recommendations and ask yourself how could they be mirrored within your own organization. Please join me in thanking Bishop Johnson and all of the members of the task force for their efforts. Two thousand twenty and two thousand twenty one also brought nationwide sp nationwide spikes in violent crime. And Akron entered the pandemic with the highest number of uniformed police officers in over a decade. But one short year later, evolving job pressures have led to a wave of retirements, and recruiting efforts really across the country have proven more challenging than any other point in a generation. This summer we sought to hire our next class of officers and half as many candidates applied to take the police exam as they did in 2019. This tells us something. It tells us that all police departments, including here, have significant work to do to develop and recruit a public safety workforce that is qualified, that is diverse, and properly supported to serve and protect our community. I am very proud to say that today is the first day in office for Akron's new police chief, Steve Milet. Chief Milet was hired through a transparent process that included a public town hall, private community member interviews, and significant discussions about the issues facing modern police departments in a diverse community like Akron. I am extremely confident that Chief Milet will be a strong, ethical leader who will work tirelessly to earn the trust and respect not only of his department but also of the community and who will be a dedicated partner in reducing and preventing violent crime in all of our neighborhoods. And for Akron to thrive, it has to be safe. I will work right alongside Chief Milet and my public safety leadership team to build those new strategies that will break the, silence of, break the cycle of violence in our city. The root causes of gun violence are extremely complex. And I think as a nation, it's high time we had a serious, nonpartisan conversation about access to guns. Despite all of the rhetoric that you hear, I believe there is common ground around limiting military-style weapons, enhancing background checks, and having appropriate licensing. And we also need to ensure that the dangerous offenders are off our streets and out of our neighborhoods. Locally, we are all investing heavily in community violence prevention initiatives. As part of the $145 million allocated to the City of Akron through the American Rescue Plan, we will be tackling youth and community violence with a robust, sustainable, culturally competent approach, building on the priorities first established by the Youth Violence Prevention Task Force convened in 2016. Millions of dollars in ARPA funding will be spent to support youth employment, program training, 
improving recreational assets across our neighborhoods and gun violence interventions for those most at risk of being caught up in violence as either a perpetrator or a victim. We will launch our community center reinvestment program with first a renovation of Patterson Park Community Center in North Hill, followed up by an $11.5 million renovation of Ed Davis and Perkins Pool in the heart of Ward 3. Next, we will make those renovations to Reservoir Park Community Center and Pool in Goodyear Heights. That's a round of applause because that's a significant investment in the community center. Thank you. I am also proposing an additional $2.6 million to ensure our multi-million multi dollar improvements into Summit Lake proceed and support the ongoing planning efforts with AMHA, Civic Commons, and most importantly, and I want to highlight this, most importantly, the Summit Lake community. They're absolutely essential to what we do with Summit Lake and their voice is going to be heard. Through a call for proposals, I've received dozens of outstanding ideas to support grassroots initiatives aimed at keeping youth and community members away from violence and on track to achieve their dreams. Over the coming weeks, I will evaluate each and every proposal and make selections for an initial $10 million investment into violence reduction. But my heart and my head both tell me that a big part of solving violent crime, especially with youth, in Akron is by giving our young people economic hope, but it has to be more than just economic hope. I want us to think boldly how we can create jobs for our high school seniors. Think about a year's worth of paid on-the-job experience, and I know many of you hire high school seniors in your companies already, but I think we need to be even bolder, like I said before. Think of what that would be worth as they transition. One of the most difficult transitions for a senior is that 18 years, is when they turn 18 years old. And I've had some great conversations with Superintendent Fowler Mack, and I want to thank her for her willingness to explore this vision even further. We have to see how this can fit within the successful college and career academy model. So thank you, Dr. Fowler Mack. <laughs> Helen Keller reminds us that although the world is full of suffering, it is also full of the overcoming of it. Our optimism, as she put it, cannot rest on the absence of evil. But there has to be a willing effort, always, to cooperate with the good, with the good that it might prevail. A willing effort. That's what it's going to take. And this is the only the beginning of a journey to rebuild and recover in a just and prosperous way. COVID has taken from all of us, but it has also provided a generational opportunity to address systemic issues in meaningful ways. We have to harness all of that good created over the past year by a community that rallied in the face of an existential threat. We have to maintain those unprecedented levels of partnership if we hope to take Akron to a better place than we were before this pandemic. And now that I've laid out my role in leading and helping through the recovery and the systemic challenges we all face, I ask all of you, what are you willing to do? How can you or your organization help a small business thrive? How can our corporate and philanthropic communities help build back momentum for downtown? How can you or your company help a senior citizen safely stay in their home? Or a single parent avoid eviction? Or a CDC build a, vacant ho build a house on a vacant lot? How can your leadership reduce violent crime by giving an Akron Public School student a job? Or motivate? the next generation to stay and invest in this community. Our recovery is going to require a whole of Akron approach if we want to be successful. Akron was once called the rubber city because we made tires, and a lot of them. We kept the title now because we are resilient. We bounce back. Not even a global pandemic can keep us down. And as a community, we are always choosing to tackle difficult issues. And we are doing this, why? because this is who we are. We often choose the hard thing because it's the right thing. People in Akron are strong. We proudly carry the weight of the rubber industry right on our back, built the arsenal of democracy through two world wars and pivoted to polymers when the American tire industry waned. We built a canal that fueled decades of commerce, still runs through the city today. 
Great movements find their home right here in Akron. Sojourner of Truth stood alone at the front of a church just down the street and said, ain't I a woman? Akron fought to abolish slavery and through AA, inspired millions around the world to bravely choose sobriety one day at a time. We are made for moments like this. We will rise to meet the challenge of our generation so that our grandchildren will one day look upon us and our time in leadership with pride and gratitude. Pride because we made progress on social justice and economic opportunity. And gratitude because their lives were better because of, because of it. I am extremely confident in Akron's recovery strategy and in our ability to see it through. Serving the city as your mayor is the honor and challenge of a lifetime. And I am more invigorated and inspired now than I have ever been. My faith in Akron, like the state of this city, is resilient, it is strong, and it founded on perpetual hope. Please join me in the work that lies ahead. I know this. Together, we can reinvest in Akron at levels not seen in a century, leaving a prosperous, more opportunity-rich community for all who come after us. Thank you. God bless each and every one of you. God bless your families, and God bless this great city. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Umoja Nation.